So I think we're live. <laughs> Good morning, Hi. everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. Hi, ladies. We all have our bells on, don't we? Our bells. We do. Yeah. Yeah. I had bells on last week. I take the bells off, but I can go find them if I need to. So we're, we're, hi, everybody. We are the WOW outcast. Are you okay, Emily? I'm just lost. What, what the heck are bells? What are we? <laughs> That's what people say. You know, I'm here with bells on. You know, have you uh, not ever heard that term? I have. Like I bells. haven't. Okay. I, I know bells and whistles, but what's, what's bells on? Explain. Well, it's just a term that we, we have here. I don't even know the origin of it. I've never even looked it up, but it's like, um, okay, I'm here with bells on, you know, like you're ready, you know, you're ready to go. Uh, so yeah, okay. I, had, I get I, it. Yeah. I, had I get that. Toes last week, just as a joke, but I never showed them. So I took them off. Every time you talked, they were actually uh, ringing. Jing they were jingling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time you unmuted, you'd be like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I went back and watched uh, the other night and I'm like, oh, yeah, you could hear the bells. <laughs> that could be a good thing, right? Hear the bells? <laughs> uh, yeah. <sighs> okay, so we are, should we just go ahead and start? Well, Sarah will be here in a minute. Okay. I'm going to start. We're live. We've already started. Yeah. We're <laughs> good morning, everybody. I don't know if we've all had our coffee or tea or anything yet. Uh, I know Kathy and I've scarfed our breakfast down. Jetty's having her tea. And um, we are the brilliant wow ladies. We are five of us this morning as soon as Sarah gets here. Um, she may be out in the desert of the Australian tundra. I don't know where she is right now, but she'll be here in a minute. And um, we are in all different time zones, except for Emily and Kathy. Um, and we are here to, uh, yeah, <laughs> Emily and I are, and Kathy are wiping the cobwebs out of our eyeballs. And, um, we are here this morning. We would like to start off this morning by paying a tribute to, uh, and having a moment of silence for the events going on in, in, in England and London. Um, I know the whole world is touched by these. Uh, it's, um, it really is turning into a little bit of a scary time uh, for the world right now. So uh, one of our p p uh, pieces of art, oh, I think Sarah's coming in, right? Sarah coming in? Yes, she okay. is. Hi, Sarah. Hi. 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 I don't see you, but I hear you, lovely. I just realized my internet connection is really bad right I now. Do, I do oh, there you Sarah. are. There's Sarah. Hi, Good Sarah. Morning. Good Hi. Is there a is there a delay or anything? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Okay, cool. And actually, it's good night for Sarah here in a moment. So, mm. um, yes. But we, we're just starting out to talk about we want to kind of do a moment of silence for the families in um, England. And someone I know here locally posted last night that a very dear friend of hers is in London, and they've not been able to reach her or her family um, and they're panicking quite a bit. So, you know, we did some, we did some moments of silence for her family yesterday or last night. Uh, I don't even know these people, but it doesn't matter because it, it still means something. So a piece of our puzzle is missing today. Um, and we just want to, um, tell her how much we love and miss her mm -hmm. and that we are sending love and peace and harmony for the folks over there. So, you know, do we want to take just a moment for uh, whatever light and love anyone wants to send over there to England? Is that good? So we just kind of close our eyes. If you want to meditate, if you want to, I don't know, float, <laughs> whatever you want to do for a second. So. Okay. Are we all good? Mm. Yeah. So we're That's kind of in a, powerful. yeah, it's very powerful. I could feel it. I, um, mm. we, um, 
we just need to put light around everything in our world right now and everyone we know, because we're kind of in a different time, aren't we, everybody? Um, mm. So I think today we're going to talk about dreams and following your dreams and dreams that you had, and maybe you manifested them, made them happen, and maybe you didn't, and maybe you have new dreams. Um, at the high school graduation at my daughter's school a couple mm. weeks ago, our headmaster spoke, and he said... At all those speeches, everyone says, you know, follow your dreams. And he said, don't follow your dreams. Surrender to the path in your life. And I thought that was really kind of cool because he talked a little differently than what we hear most people's speeches at the uh, graduation. And um, I know we always have like our own idea of how we want things to go in our life. And we have things we dream about is, you know, when we're little girls, I mean, I grew up in Florida, so I grew up around rocket ships blasting off and Disney world. And, you know, part of my childhood was we could see the fireworks every night from our house. Um, it kind of shook the windows, um, all the, the fantasy about that, you know, I, it was my first job. I worked at Disney world. So being around all of that surreal kind of stuff makes you really dream big and think that anything's possible. And I know for myself personally, I was on a journey and a path and I thought, okay, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And it had to do with entertainment because we had the movie studios and we had lots of film and theater and TV and all that stuff in Orlando, Florida. So and I, when I met my husband, I was working at a uh, tourist attraction and not on the side of the road somewhere. It was designated in the middle of Orlando. <laughs> so it was, it was very well visited by people from all over the world. So being in that environment, I think kind of sets you in a direction. It doesn't mean that it's the right direction for you, but it maybe is a direction that you believe that you're supposed to go down. So I had my heart set on, um, at that time in my early 20s, that part of life. And my life took a turn um, sh shortly after I got married with my health. And so it really changed that for me. So as an adult, uh, during parts of my life, I quit dreaming about things because it didn't turn out the way I thought. And you have those thoughts that come up. I'm too old. There's not enough time. I can't ever do this. Um, it'll never work out. I don't know the right people. You become more leery of stepping out and doing what you want to do. And you start to quit, you start to quit believing in yourself. I know it happened for me. I know I'm not the only person this has happened to. So as an adult, I'm, I'm going to be the big five Oh, this summer. I came and believe because when I was little, that was just old as dirt. So I guess I'm old as dirt y'all. So Except that my brother has more gray hairs than I do, and he's younger than I am. So we had that conversation last night. You color your hair, don't you? I said, no, I don't. I just pluck them out when they come in. That's what I do. I you're going to be bald. <laughs> I'm doing that. Mary, I, I, I have to tell you something. You yeah. know, I mean, I've, I've now passed the 50 mark, so I'm yeah. past big five. You and, I are the, you and I are the two broads. And, the big <laughs> <laughs> and I can honestly tell you, um, you know, I'm the only one in my family who, who doesn't have a head of gray hair. Wow. All my siblings are, are younger than I am. And, um, and, and they're, they started going gray at an early age. So I have these few sort of strands of gray hair, just like on the sides here. You know, I, I, let me just put it out there. I like the guys who go gray at the temple. You know, it looks oh, very yeah. distinguished. Yeah. <laughs> So I love my gray hairs. You know, I just got a few odd strands here, nothing to talk about. And um, I don't really color my hair often, but when I do, um, if I do it myself, I make sure I don't do the gray hairs. And when I have my hair colored at a salon, I say to them, girls, whatever you do, leave my gray hairs alone. If I'm probably the only person, you know, that's walked into the salon that tells you to not color my gray hairs, but don't touch them <laughs> i love it that's awesome how do you do that do you like just pull them out like and they just yeah lips or something they just yeah they kind of just do it back and protect that you know my strands of gray hair because i have an absolute thing about it i feel i need to celebrate 
the stage where I'm in at my life at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'm enjoying it and I want to live in the moment. And I simply, I've, I love my gray hairs. It's, it's, a, it's a symbol of where I'm at in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, I, I am like my life, but those gray hairs, they can just, they, go back yeah. I was going to say, I'm the youngest in the group. And Brigetti, I think we're at the same stage in our lives. <laughs> because I have been getting, I have been getting gray hairs for way too long. I remember I found my first one the day before my 25th birthday. And I was like, I'm so wise. <laughs> and now you're like, I'm so know. old. Now I'm like, Sarah Wiseman. What is, right? I blame my husband. It's all his fault. <laughs> and now I'm like, no, all of the hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway you know, they're like symbols of um they're like they're like we can look stress at well they are that <laughs> they're a lack of some mineral or something in the body i've mm. read up on it, like copper or something i don't know or too much copper but what what i do think is that they're symbols of our warriorhood you know what i mean right. if we put stripes on our shield it's a gray hair you know this one, right that one. It's all the battles we've conquered, right? Well, that's, that's exactly what I say. You know, I say I've earned my stripes. Don't try yeah, and take them away yeah. from me. You're a powerful lioness. Wait, <laughs> it's funny you say too much copper because my house is like has copper everywhere. Oh, maybe you I'm a little like, bit Google obsessed that. with it. Research mm. that. Maybe you have too much. You're bringing your your own gray hair to yourself. Right. <laughs> it's my own fault. That and my toddler, I think. Wow, well, she is precious. Yes. Yeah, she is yeah. precious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she is. So, you know, I, I think that um, I want to hear you guys, want to hear y'all's kind of your, maybe a brief, because I know we only have so much time this morning, but to talk about what you, have you followed your dreams? Did it work out like you thought? Have you got new ones? I mean, you know, I'm going to be 50 and I have a new career. I never knew this was going to happen. I had no clue. I had a crystal ball and it didn't show me squat. You know, for this at least, I didn't see that. So I totally believe it can be done. I mean, I spent my life thinking I had no time. I was running out of time. I had to do all this when I was young, but I was in that environment. You know, your, your body and your, your age are kind of like your job, your vehicle. So, you know, so many people think, oh, they're too old. You're too fat. You're too this, you're too that. And it's like, you know what, you're the only one in charge of what your belief system is. And you're mm. the one who decides what you're going to do when. And, and I totally and firmly believe that now in my life, you're never too old to do whatever it is you want. I mean, you mm. see stories about people who go back and get their college degree in their seventies, you know, Absolutely. rock on, man, rock on. When I, school, when I was in school in college, um, I was an art major. So we walked around, you know, with the big portfolio, flat portfolio thing. Yeah, was, cool. This was sort of pre-computer, if you will. Now I'm, I'm, now I'm aging myself. But mm -hmm. we had computers, but it wasn't quite like it is today. So we had a lot of classes where it was drawing, um, painting, you know, all those different types of classes. Well, anyway, so we're walking around with these things. We got our backpacks. And here this little gray hair old lady, she's probably about 80, I think she was. She decided to go back to school to get her degree. Oh, yay. I mean, we all thought that was really cool. It's like, you know, here yeah. she's in her classes and we were just, you know, we talked to her and she talked to us. And it was just really neat to see her on campus fulfilling a dream that she's had. That's so inspiring. I love it. That's awesome. Mm. And Kathy, what about you? Did you, did your dreams turn out the way you thought? I mean, I think everything's kind of different from now than when we were in our 20s because we're different people, but... You know, do you think you're following kind of along that path? Or are you just kind of reinventing it? Probably a little bit of both because, mm -hmm. you know, you have these ideas of what maybe you might do. You know, the whole art thing. Yes, I followed that for years. Um, I did think <clears throat> I would actually live at the beach. Oh, let's go. Oh, wow. No, well, I'm two you. hours from the beach. Is that close enough? Yeah, it is close enough because I'm like seven, eight or nine, depending on how many pee stops you have. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say that yes, yes and no. Um, but yes, the whole reinventing, of course, you ladies know that I decided to do personal training a little over a year ago. Yeah. You know, so, 
you know, it's scary. It's, it's one of those things where you're very uncertain. Should I do this? Am I too old? Um, gosh, you know, I'm too old to learn new things, but in reality, we're not, you know, too old to learn new things. That's silly. I know. (laughs) I know. You know what it is? It's all that negative self-talk. It is. Absolutely. We're good at beating ourselves up, aren't we? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we're we're very good at being comfortable where we, where where we are at. Creatures Mm -hmm. of habit. Well, sure. I mean, and I'm that type of person that I really, truly don't like change. Um, (laughs) I get very anxious. You know, right now I have another second interview to train this guy um, in a more serious way tomorrow to determine whether or not I might get this position. So what exactly happened? You went to have this job, like this job interview, you're supposed to train him. What exactly happened on that? Well, I really wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. You know what I mean? He's like, just be prepared for a workout, you know? Um, (laughs) I want to be tired. Like I've never stepped foot in this gym, so I have no idea the equipment they have. Now I do. Is it hardcore? Is it more hardcore? It's yeah. Than the gym that I work at now. Yes. So you just got to bring your Kathy on, man. Just got to bring your Kathy. He's ready. I'm ready. (laughs) I know. Stuff that we're ready to do. And I'm, I'm thinking if he's not tired from this, then he's Superman. Well, I'd be tired of watching you. Can you do a Imagine he's someone you really don't like. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I'll have to do that. But, you know, I'm ready and I'm prepared to really work them out. So hopefully this this is enough. You know, and the the difference between this gym and that gym, we only have a half hour to train somebody. We only spend a half hour training someone. You know, the gym I'm at now, it could be an hour. People can sign up for two hours because it's free. Yes, it's free. So it's part of the gym membership. So, you know, I'm used to having time. We're here. He he did a training. I went with him on a training session. This girl, I think her arms were going to fall off. (laughs) Mine was. Oh, I can't do it anymore. He's like, down, down, do it. (laughs) You know, and he's moving fast and he's just this way, that way. Okay, now lift. This is how you lift. You lift. And it's like, oh, okay. Dude, take a Valium. (laughs) Yeah. But he's like, you have to, they're paying for a half hour session. Yeah, I got to get in and get it out. So you need to give them the best workout for their money. You know, Mm -hmm. they need to walk away feeling like, you know, it's worth what I hate you. So you just go beast mode. (laughs) Yeah, beast mode. So it's going to be, you know, it's, it's definitely different than the gym now. It's more relaxed, laid back. Where this one is, you know, when you're training these people, it's. So I'm just going to have to switch it up. Anyway, I don't know what my point is. My point is, you know, trying something new in your life. Um, you know, I'm sure we all have regrets as well. You know, I kind of wish I did this or I wish I did this earlier in my life. But you kind of have to, I realize that you have to trust the path that you're on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. But if you do have something that's a burning desire, try it. You'll never know. You know, I don't have to stick with personal training. You know, if I get going and I don't like this fast pace and I really don't like the way it's done, then who says I have to continue doing it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a lot of people are afraid to follow their dreams and whatnot just because they're afraid of failure. I think that gets drilled into us at the beginning of time is like we start out and we are these creatures that dream that have like our eyes wide open, anything's possible. And Mm. by the time we are in elementary school, you know, it's counted out of us to get our head out of the clouds, to Mm. think realistically you can't do this, you can't do that. So dreaming is something that's pretty much taken away from everybody and you have Mm -hmm. to actively turn it back on and pursue it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. And it's kind of like a a friend of mine wrote a book called, um, Oh, women are like diamonds. You know, we're kind of, we, and this is for men too, you know, but we come into this world, shiny little beings and life just breaks us down. And then, when we are going to get married, we look at our finger and go, 
we put more value on that diamond on our finger than we do ourselves because life has beaten mm. us down and we've forgotten to believe in ourselves. So Kathy, you're right. We got to take a chance on ourselves and put ourselves out there. And God, it is so scary sometimes. And, and everybody has their own different way. They're going to do it. You know, and well, I, your book. I just, yeah. I just been through it. So, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't, I mean, I didn't think anyone would like it, but I kept getting that. I, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. So I surrendered to it. And I said, okay, fine. I will do this. Okay. But I was like this, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. the whole time. <laughs> and so, I mean, as soon as I did, it's like all these doors open and I went, oh, this is what this is like. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to put that as I use this with my children, square peg in a round hole your whole life. You put the square peg in the square hole. It actually works. You know, so can I read y'all something real quick that Donna Marie, I asked her if I could quote her on this. And she said, people need dreams. That's what keeps the soul alive. Dreams, hopes, belief, and love. And I thought that was really beautiful. So um, we love her and sorry, she's not here with us, but this is definitely an honor of her and all the families. And uh, so um, Emily and Sarah and Brigetti, do y'all want to give a quick little synopsis of things you wanted to do that you actually did, or you haven't, and you're thinking about it. I know one thing Emily's thinking about, she wants to write, right? Uh, you know, it was that thing that you said just now, surrender. It's, um, yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I was a certain person uh, until I got married and I had so many dreams. I was going to travel the world. Um, mm. I saw a picture that DM posted the other day. She was at Queens Hotel. Uh, on a date night, and I actually had an apprenticeship to become a chef. <clears throat> and my life was on a, a totally different path. You know, I lived in Europe. I was going to be a globe trotter. I wasn't going to have any kids whatsoever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to be a writer. So many dreams. And then I got married at 19. Mm -hmm. And wow. I never did that apprenticeship. I never wrote anything. Mm. Um, I just went into a, t a completely different direction and kind of lost myself. And um, I think a lot of us do that. We get caught up in what's going on in our life. But now my kids are basically adults and I'm finding that that person that I was in the beginning is coming starting back. To wake up. Yeah. She's waking yeah. up and I'm doing yeah. all these things. I'm building a world a world business. I'm, and so this thing with the writing, I have always been a writer. I used to write songs. I used to write poetry. I started a novel before. And so people kept telling me, you should write this. You should do that. You should do that. And I kept fighting. No, 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 no. And I think it was what, like maybe two or three days ago, I finally just fine. Okay. I'll go ahead and do it. I surrender to it. And it's something about surrendering to your path that all the doors instantly open for you. Everything that you need, all the pieces that you need, you just start falling in your lap. And I'm actually just learning how to dream again. It's something that I forgot how to do that, you know? So it, it's really cool to watch how everything falls in place. And it's scary. It's scary to take that leap and to be open to doing what your path is. But so many beautiful things start to happen when you do. Yeah. And we are all very supportive, a hundred percent here in this group of each other. So we want to be a representation of, of how to empower your friends and other women, because we really do empower each other in this group. And it can definitely be implemented out there in the world. It, it is doable to have friends, to be vulnerable, to share your dreams and not have people laugh at you unless, you know, we're all teasing each other. Right. So <laughs> Other than that, we, we just really, we, you know, we're all, you know, we're all working our way through life, aren't we? Mm. You know, so I, I support you a hundred percent, Emily and Kathy, you know, we're rooting you on and Miss Sarah. And I don't know where B is B still with us. She is. She's right here. I can't see her. No, I can't see her. I can't. Can I? There you go. I'm here. I'm here. Can yeah. you see me? Okay. So, Yes. No, I cannot, but yeah, that's okay. Cause I know you're here. So are you my conscience? And that from Dory. <laughs> <laughs> just keep swimming. Just, yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a hard little song. Just keep swimming. 
So our young Sarah, uh, do you have any, any, anything you want to share with us? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I can kind of come from both sides of the coin. I remember in high school, everyone would talk about what they wanted to do when they grew up and people wanted to be doctors and nurses. And <clears throat> I don't know, I don't think it was anything my parents instilled in me or anything. I just, people would say, oh, what do you want? What do you want to do when you leave school? And I said, I don't really know. Like all I've ever really, really wanted to do is be like a really good mom and a really good wife. And I don't know, like, I don't know why. And I wasn't ever ashamed to say it. Um, Yeah, it was just my dream. And I also wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to do that. But for some reason, the importance of raising humans just seemed like the most important job in the world to me which it is obviously but it anyway obviously there's other things that people can dream for but that for me that was just my dream and you know I almost lost that dream I thought it was never going to happen when I had a few years where I was very wayward and um you know you guys know I got caught up in some really bad stuff and um my life just started going down the drain and then just yeah through faith and everything I I pulled myself together again. I, you know, kicked every addiction that I had and um, met my husband at church and he just, well, he was just obsessed with me. (laughs) But, yeah, he just, um, he was just loyal to me from the beginning and helped that dream come true. But now that I've had babies and I have what I dreamed of, I'm trying to be the best mom and the best wife I can be, but, you ladies know that like lately a passion or I guess has been ignited in me through our lovely show that we love the never settle show um where Mario Armstrong was just talking about what do you want to do like set it out really clearly for yourself what do you want to do and so I started the whole um sincerely Sarah thing I just want to help people I want to love people I want to connect people to a God that loves them whatever that looks like And um, so just recently, I've really actually started pursuing that dream, which is terrifying, (laughs) so terrifying. Um, But it's like if it's not going to happen if I don't make it happen. So absolutely. If you don't do it, it is not getting done, honey. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just an idea. And I don't want to have an idea. I want to have a dream. So I'm starting small and I have like little goals and little dreams along the way that I'm wanting to achieve. But one day I would love to write a book. Yay. The end. <laughs> There's a book inside each of us. Everybody has yeah, a I think so. Yeah, we all have our own path. We all have our mm-hmm. own strengths. We all have our own stories. Some of us have lots of stories in mm-hmm. one story of our life. Mm-hmm. And it's really important to share because you never know who you're going to touch, even if it's just one person. You might change mm-hmm. a lot for them, and it's really important. So, mm-hmm. you know, we cheer you on. We Thanks. love you. Yay. Thank you. So, hey, B, are you up? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's your turn. Come on. Is that why you're called Fearless Gray or did Jennifer, is that Jennifer's name? Because I saw that with your, something on the, your interview with her. Jennifer's, uh, Jennifer's show is called Fearless Gray. Okay, that's right. Yes. Um, uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I was, I think I was just agreeing with her and saying, look, you know, we're both in the same um, phase of our lives. And, um, and so a lot of what she says and does resonates with where I am at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as fulfilling dreams, um, I don't know that there's one particular thing, you know, in, in my case, it's, 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 it's a matter of a couple of things. I traveled um, a bit with my friends when I, before I got married. And I would have liked to continue doing that. You know, it's still on my bucket list. There are still lots of places I would like to, to visit. Um, unfortunately, my, my travel is more or less limited to armchair travel, which is not such a bad thing. I mean, you can, there's so much you can do with armchair travel these days. And that's simply because of my, uh, my chronic pain that I live with and I've got fibromyalgia. I've told you guys that. Um, so that does limit my ability in terms of real world travel. Mm. I did want to have a family 
and I've got a family. I've got two sons. Um, they've done me proud. Um, I enjoy my family. And, you know, I've always said my biggest accomplishment um, would be that if anything were to happen to me, I would like my children to know that I, that I love them. And I think I've accomplished that. It's something that I've instilled in them since they were, were born. You know, that to me is my biggest accomplishment in life, that I have two children who are grounded and two children that know that their mom loves them. That to me is my, is my biggest accomplishment ever by far. Um, I've always enjoyed getting involved in social projects. Um, I love doing that. I, I had to pull back from my service to others because of my limitations with my, with my back. So I can't do as much as I would like to do for other people. Um, and sometimes that is a little bit frustrating, but I can only work within the constraints of what I currently am able to, to do physically. I have no regrets about what I've done before with my life. I have absolutely zero regrets. I've enjoyed every single stage um, of my life. Um, I enjoy being of service to people. And if people haven't returned the favor, sometimes I may have, if I have to be honest, I may have felt a little bit resentful, but I've, I've moved past that because it's not really my issue. And, um, you know, if people haven't felt the need or the urge to reciprocate, that's okay because that was never really my intention for doing what I've done in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever I've done for others is on me. Mm -hmm. um, it makes me happy. It makes me tick. Um, that's really powerful, Virginia. Thanks, Sarah. You know, I... Yeah. At one point, I did allow myself to become resentful, mm. but it took away so much of my happiness. Mm. And I, I had to have the self-talk with myself and realize that, you know, I am not defined by other people. Mm. Um, I will not allow myself to be defined by other people or by things. Um, mm. I know who I am. I know what I can give. It makes me happy to give and I will continue doing that to the extent that I possibly can because it's what mm. makes me, you know, the happiest. Yeah. So whatever project I can get involved in, um, I will do. Live streaming is something, honestly, that never crossed my mind. It was never on the horizon for me. But I have embraced it. I enjoy it. It's something that's within my power, something I can do within my limitations. Um, and it's something I'm going to pursue. It makes me happy. Um, and I can use what I can do with live streaming to make other people happy. And that I think is for me more important than, than anything else. It's, it's what live streaming enables me to do for other people that I may not otherwise have been able to do. Mm. So this is definitely a space that, um, that I want to explore more and more and see how I can use this as a vehicle to do, um, to do great things for other people. Mm. That's, that's where I'm at at the moment. That's what I can do. It's what I want to do and what I'm going to be pursuing. Isn't it kind of cool how sometimes yeah. like your dreams are not anything that you dreamt of before. Right. They kind of like fall in your lap and then you're like, hmm, maybe I'll pick this up. And then all of a sudden yeah. you get this huge passion. You're like, whoa. Yeah. And you're like, okay, so this fulfills everything that I want to do right now. I just didn't know how to say it, you know? Yeah. And you know, being a mom, um, I was told that being a mom, however form you're a mom, even like my mom's helping raise one of my, my nephews and his son right now are taking care of him. So it is the most, it is the most important thing that a woman, the most important and powerful thing that a woman can do in her life is to love another human being and raise them up. 
And I thought, mm. man, when that was told to me a long time ago, when I was younger, I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, cause I was young and I couldn't <laughs> see it. But now yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, being a mom, it's just, I always wanted to be one. I didn't think I could have mm. children. I would, I mean, I mm. went seven years before it happened and it is a very powerful thing. So it's not, it's not for the light and faint hearted. <laughs> <laughs> definitely mm. not there are hazards with the job and yeah. we need insurance and everything else hard it's the most important and the most emotional <laughs> oh well you know it's I just never like, wanted to be a mom just FYI I have always hated kids really <laughs> Emily I never no. wanted to be a mom and I've got you must to love the puppy spam <laughs> <laughs> but I do have to agree like it's it's a deeper kind of love than anything else. And I'm really glad I had my kids, but I still hate kids. Let's just get that straight. <laughs> it's funny. So she's killed the, the Wicked Witch of the East. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell them. It's so crazy, too. I will tell them, I hate you. You annoy me. Get out of my way. And then all the kids are like, ah, you're so funny. I love you. And they all call me mom. Because <laughs> you talk like a teenager. That's what it is, Emily. Yeah. You talk like a yeah. teenager. Holy cow. You need to do a whole You're the video. Chi- the child whisperer. <laughs> yeah. the so that's what we should be. Is that what I should be saying to my kids? I'm getting it all wrong. <laughs> Just tell them you hate them and they'll be <laughs> like, Crazy. get out of my way. <laughs> well, you know, they say. They do have an attention bucket. They have an attention bucket and they have a power bucket. They have the need, they need mm-hmm. filled every day and they're always wanting to please. So I don't know, mm-hmm. Emily, maybe you have figured it out, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she has the million put that in your book. Mary, I have I... to tell you that's, that's on my bucket list too. You know, I, I, I is writing a book. Let's do it, guys. Um, Let's do it. I told Kathy, she, because Kathy is an adoptive mom, if that's okay to say, and she wants to write about that. And I think she has a huge amount of people out there that would really embrace what she has to say and her trials yeah. and her tribulations and her love and her everything she pours into it and how she feels. And, you know, I think her mm. journey would just help so many people out there. So, you know, what? Mm. let's just do it. Let, let's have a writing session and everybody get started on their books because there is a book literally inside of each one of us. We have, so let's do a, let's do a wow book and we'll do yes. a chapter H because yeah, there's, then, there's an idea. You only have to do a little bit and then you can, yeah. everybody could be a published author because yeah. you know, we all partook in this book. And that might be the, the step to go in our, in our own book, you know? Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you got to get your feet wet. I think once you get your feet wet, just from my own experience, once you get your feet wet and you get your feet in the door, it tells you, okay, Hey, I can do this. So it gives you that much more incentive and empowerment to go do it. And you go, okay, you know what? Listen, this is not as bad as I thought or ugly or, or awful, you know, <laughs> and I can actually do this. And man, that's so empowering to feel that way. You know, yeah. it's like losing that's the pounds. biggest hurdle for anything is, is, mm. you know, telling yourself that you can do it. Mm. Yes. That's you something I struggle yourself. with the most. I think. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do. And that's why mm-hmm. they don't follow their dreams. So when I realize. I realize it goes back so far to when I was a teenager and it's just like a throwaway comment that was made by my parents where they just say, Oh, you're not really the academic one. Like you're the social one. And you know, they didn't intend for it to be bad. They actually were trying to help and say, Oh, don't put pressure on yourself at school. Like you'll get through life on your personality. (laughs) Oh gosh. Listening, saying it out loud. It's just ridiculous. (laughs) But um, they didn't realize, but it just meant that, like Tim would say to me, oh, why, why didn't you go to university? I was like, oh, I'm not really academic. He was like, why? I'm like, oh. I don't, I don't know. know. Somebody told me that. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're young, you just kind of believe everything is told to you. Yeah. And um, then I went to Bible college and I had every assignment in early <laughs> I got really good marks and I realized I just wasn't passionate about maths or, you know, like I wasn't passionate about what I was studying in school or. Well, see, you know, I, Sarah, that's, yeah. that's what my kids are going through at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. The way school is structured just does not work for them. No. And, but when they have a real interest like you did, you know, they, they realize, yeah, they can do that stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? 
Um, yeah. You probably just didn't have the confidence, maybe. No, I didn't. You know? I and the confidence the thinking that, you know, and a lot of times people will n- not intentionally, but kind of put thoughts into your head thinking, gee, mm. maybe I am this. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm not at, you know, maybe I can't do college. Maybe. Yeah. You know, and then you found out on your own that you were capable of doing it. Right. And I was so shocked. I was like, what do you mean I got I got that mark? Like, are you sure you didn't you know, mix that up with somebody else? But you know, I also do you feel that we put a lot of emphasis on going to college where, yeah. you know, we have trade schools, we have a bunch of different types of schools. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't push my kids to go to college. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm telling them, you know, figure out what you want to do. And then from there, that's when you figure out the schooling, whether it be because Hannah likes yeah. makeup. Yeah, she goes so to college. You wouldn't go to college for makeup. No, mm. you go to cosmetology school. And that's good, Kathy, because you're not mm. pushing something on them that they're not going to be able to achieve. Like someone yeah. I know who he's going to school to be a minister. I don't think it's really in his heart exactly that he wants to do that. And then I have a friend who he never went to college. He figured out business and he has a car dealership that has been so successful. They live in a 10,000 square foot house. It doesn't mean we all want to do that, but I'm just, Mm. I'm I'm saying what you're saying. It's not for everybody. And the problem with our, and this could be a whole show, um, but the problem with our world, and I know, especially in the United States, our schools are not geared for our kids anymore. All these kids Mm. coming in are outside the box. Have they ever been? Really? I think right. when, when they were all minions back in our parents' time. You know so I mean? Jacques brought up a really good point. He says that, you know, the first pillar to being able to dream is a self-esteem check. And I really mm. think that's what it is. Like, I think the it's first, true. the formative years of our lives is built tearing down our self-esteem and making us doubt ourselves. And yeah. those people that dream are people that actually love themselves and believe in themselves. And they don't. Mm. They don't I, I was going to say that's um, the same thing, you know, we tend to pick up the rhetoric of people around us and somehow our own rhetoric gets drowned. Mm. And as you get older, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling as I got older and at the phase where I'm in now, I'm taking ownership of my own rhetoric and um, finding myself, finding my happy space and learning that it's okay to do what makes me happy. Mm. Um, it's, it's okay to, to have a passion of my own and to take ownership of that passion and to pursue it. Right. Um, and people aren't always going to understand what you're doing. You know, they're not going to understand why, you, you know, they're going off based off of what their thinking is. Do you know what I mean? Like for Jetty, why, why are you doing live streaming? Oh my gosh. That just seems mm. silly. You know, it's like, well, maybe you don't like live streaming or believe in it, but she does. Well, and you know, also what she said right there, you're not going to make everybody happy. I think that's a Mm -hmm. huge step in the right direction is that we are raised to give, to be selfless. Mm -hmm. And if you're selfish, then that is actually something frowned upon. And, and we think of it as a bad thing, taking care of ourselves. But when we take care of ourselves, we're actually taking care of everybody else. So we change that mentality. Like I'm not being selfish to put myself first. I'm actually yeah. being more helpful and more valuable by doing so. Right. And I think Emily, that stems from kind of where, you know, you and Kathy and I are teens are so self-absorbed and we sit and we tell them, stop being so self-absorbed. You got to come out of this. You got to think about other people. Don't say this. Don't do that. Don't say this. What did Kathy roll her eyes? I didn't see She's that. like, <laughs> and it's for, it's frozen on that face on my screen. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> so I, I think that, you know it, it also Emily it comes from that period of kids lives I mean you know they get so self-absorbed we remember being teenagers holy cow mm. you mean you want me to do something I think about somebody else what are you crazy mm. you know? so you want a tip because I, I noticed in something that you said you're like don't do this don't do that don't do this when I was a lifeguard we actually got specific training no, if lifeguard. you tell a kid don't do this or stop Mm -hmm. something like stop running or don't run or whatever. They hear the last word. Right. And so you really have to change how you say things so that you just kind of get in their brain a little bit. 
Let me write this down. (laughs) So instead of saying stop running or don't run, what do you want them to do? You want them to walk. Walk So so walk. Walk. Walk And that's what you yell. Walk. Right. Instead of. Sarah, put that down because that's one thing they teach with, um, and we're talking about teenagers, but you, that's really good for toddlers. So you don't have to say that whole thing that we, I've heard everyone I know say, I've told them this a hundred million times, you know, and <laughs> yeah. the reason we have is it's that psychology, like what Emily's talking about. I mean, I remember learning that when my girls were little. So it was like, do this because they, I don't know, mm-hmm. kids latch onto that last word you say, right? because the rest of it's so, like Charlie Brown's teacher. (laughs) How to be aware of your child. So this sparked a memory in me, right? Mm. My son is so literal. And so we have told him actually do not stick a fork in the light socket. And what do we find him doing? We find him sticking a knife in the light socket. And we're like, why are you doing that? We told you. He said, you told me a fork. You didn't say anything. Yeah, right. Yeah. You have sex oh, like no. my kids. They do the same thing. And I feel like they're missing my words. They're screwing with you. So, so instead now of I saying- actually, every single time I say something, I'm like, hear the principle behind my words and not the actual words themselves. Okay? Don't do as I so- do. Do as I say. <laughs> so instead of saying a puppy don't pinch your little brother's nipples i should say <laughs> i don't know what i should say <laughs> i should okay. say Jimbo keep your down. hands to yourself <laughs> yeah or you take your own pinch your own nipples yeah <laughs> well, i was gonna say that but, but then that won't go down well in public i don't think oh could you imagine her in kindy she would be that kid and she's gonna be that woman like walking down the street while my mom told me it was okay yeah, she'd be like <laughs> she'll just be standing in the corner at kindy like <laughs> and her oh gee where did this go <laughs> oh, thank you thank you for the advice i feel empowered <laughs> This conversation's just gone way south, yeah. <laughs> We're dreaming of the possibilities, for Jenny. What are you talking about? Yeah. Dreams. <laughs> hey, this is what we do, people. We get slightly inappropriate at some point. <laughs> slightly. Actually, uh, we, uh, Mary and I have been working together to put together some shows, and we're using this group as our material. <laughs> Absolutely, you guys. It's been hilarious. We have cracked up through the entire writing, both both times that we've been, well, we've been working on it twice, and it's very fast, because it's like just comes. But yeah, it's inspired by everybody in this group. Aren't you all excited? Are you scared? Are you scared? What are you writing? <laughs> We're writing some shows for uh, for Bubbler Media. Cool. That's it's cool. actually the first show we're doing. All the characters are built off of our characters. Yes. So. So Sarah, her name is Anne, I think. She goes on a date after like the first 10 years or something. And we go through mm-hmm. her drawers and we find stuff. <laughs> 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 and then one of them, you know, there's another character. I think her name's Tiffany. She's off of Donna Marie. She's in the bathtub with her cookies and she spills all the cookies in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really funny. So Sarah, you get to put the Spanx on. And what's Bridgetti's name? Oh, I need to look it up. I can't because I'm on the computer. I don't she's know. like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah. Oh, she's Vanessa. <laughs> Vanessa. Vanessa. Yeah. That's spicy. I know. And oh, tell them what your name is, Emily. Uh, I don't know. What is my Isn't name? it Marisol? Marisol. Yeah, we wanted to get yeah. some flavor in here. So I was like, what's what's a good Hispanic name, like Mexican? Mm. So we came up with Marisol. Are we all from different countries in your show? I mean, I think we're all just from – it's actually really built off of this group. And it so absolutely is, yes. We, like, when we go out and we do things, we have video chats to help each other and because we're not ever in the same room. And so we're trying to figure out how are we going to do this show where you have all these different friends – and they can't really film in the same place. And so we're like, let's just do it off of ours. Like we would do a video chat to say, hey, I'm going on a date. I need you to check this stuff out. And so that's kind of, I mean, we, we haven't really put their locations or anything, but it's going to be hmm. built off of social media friends. Cool. Yeah, the, 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 what, what's okay. Kathy's name? Kat, Kathy is, okay, hold on. So Sarah is Anna and Emily is Marisol. 
And then we have DM is Tiffany. Tiffany. DM is Tiffany. And then we have Bergetti's Vanessa. And then Kathy and I are, are what are those other two names? We just came up with those. It's like uh, Allison and what's the other one? Can you? You're Allison, aren't you? I don't know if I am. I don't know if it's you or me. What's the, what's the other name? See, we're on here, so I can't. I really don't know. Right. Okay, Kathy, I'll send it to you in the message. I'll send it to you. <laughs> we don't remember you, Kathy. You're just like, you're off in La La Land all the time. So whatever, you're drama queen. No. <laughs> no, she's Allison or she's another. It's so typical. I'm middle child. Never. Yeah. Oh. I want to tell you oh. what you We should definitely her. name her. What, what's the middle child from Brady Bunch? We should change Marcia? it. No, Marsha? No, she should be Marsha. Jan. 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 Wasn't Jan the middle one? Oh, yeah. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah. Cindy was the older one. <laughs> Marcia. Yeah. Marcia's the older one. Cindy was the younger one. Yeah, Jan Marcia, was the Marcia. middle one that was always forgotten. Well, what, with a name like Jan, <laughs> how can you name? So listen, I have to okay. tell you, Kathy, we just added these three other names two days ago. So they're not in my head yet. And I haven't written since two days ago. But the second show, you guys are going to love this. Is about our husbands and all their snoring. So we have cracked up about this one because it's going to be like an orchestra of snoring while we're trying. Yes. This. Yes. Funny. So each of us mm -hmm. have to audio audio uh, tape our husbands snoring. I think well, what we right. should do is we should get the the um, audios of everybody snoring, and then we yes. should actually like auto tunes some kind of yes. like song. song. Yeah. yeah. I can do my husband's for you. Like maybe Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something along that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband has a really good range, so I feel like he would be really helpful in that process. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little high pitch, other times it's like a deep growl. <laughs> I did I did tell Mary this story and I don't think I've ever told you guys. When my husband starts, I don't know why he loves me. I'm such a needy <laughs> person to him. Anyway, he'll be snoring and his mouth is closed, which is just... <laughs> right. So I will yeah. plug his nose and I will watch him. <laughs> until he actually opens his mouth and he's like <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> That's you cute. are a mean lady I, I, Emily I, I, and I hate kids and I'll tell them that I hate them too so <laughs> I, think I hate everybody I think <laughs> I'm surprised he's still sleeping in the same bed as you Emily I think he must forget. He must have like, I don't know, sleep amnesia. <laughs> yeah. The brain cells. He didn't even know who you are. You're like a new chick every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, my husband, I don't know how it works, but our whole marriage, anytime he's like dead to the world sleeping, even if he's snoring intensely, I'll be like, love you, babe. He's like, love you. <laughs> I can say it any time of night and he'll be like, love you too. <laughs> he just keeps sleeping. <laughs> I'm like, someone trained him well because that is great. Yeah, it is great. So if I'm ever feeling needy at like 3 a.m., I'll be like, I love you. <laughs> Straight me. back. You don't have to be yeah. so mean, Emily. When Mark snores and I'm like really upset and I've had enough, I start like pounding his pillow and shaking his pillow. Yeah. Like, snore, stop for the love I've of I've also me. done that too. Well, see, I don't do it to make him stop. I can't sleep and I can't turn on the TV because it'll wake him up and blah, blah. I do it to entertain myself. It is so funny Duh. watching you for air. Oh, <laughs> if I can't, if you, I can't sleep because you're snoring. Oh, I'm. I get nasty. Oh yeah, me too. Kathy. Yeah, I get so grumpy, and then do, I'm not going to talk to you because I'm so mad because you did that on purpose because you don't care yeah. about that I need. Sleep. Yeah, I don't yeah, care you about your care. sleep apnea. So now I just you're... kick him out. It's like go, leave. Yeah, I mean, if you were really concerned <laughs> about it. And you go to the doctor and get yourself taken care of. Hey, listen, I'm going to probably knock mine out, put him in the car, take him in. <laughs> he already did a sleep study. He's already sound asleep. Just get it done. And yeah. Tell him, hey, you got to wear this thing. You know? Yeah. Okay, mine has I... sleep apnea and he won't wear his mask because, well, his nose is. He's a man. Head. He's a man. <laughs> he used to have the kind that goes over your face like this. Yeah. And then does he have the thing up at the nose now? Yes, and he can't breathe. So you know what he doesn't do? He doesn't go to the doctor and tell them he can't use it. Because he's a man, just like Sarah said. Yeah. Like, Please. <laughs> better and help themselves. Can we like not put this all on like male species and just say he's an idiot? <laughs> I, I, <'cause laughs> I'm an idiot species. <laughs> is that not the same thing? 
<laughs> oh, I'm just saying. How does this work in with our dreams? Did we always dream yeah. about this? Yeah, right. I well, mean, they're dreaming. Nightmares anytime they're snoring. I feel like there's a train and I'm like this damsel in distress, like tied <laughs> onto the railroad tracks. And you know what? Your kids are going to come into that dream and go, I hate you, mom. I'm going to let you get run over. <laughs> <laughs> no savior for you today. That's right. <laughs> I think you should write a book on parenting and being a wife. Oh my God. There's going to be a lot of books going on here. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of comedies is what it's going to be because even mm-hmm. though they're like tragic events or stressful events, all of us kind of have like a comical spin to it. Mm-hmm. We do. Oh we my God. True. We're going to start a publishing company. We're going to start a publishing company. That's what we'll do. Well, I feel like this, yeah. this book is a really amazing idea where we all do a chapter. Yeah. I thought about that a while ago. I was, you? I like the book chapters is a normal book. Uh, What's that? Like this thick. How many chapters is a normal book? Like a <laughs> more than six chapters. Right, but how many chapters is a is a normal size? Mm, I, you know what? It really depends. You're looking at it, people kind of go almost by pages and words. Like we just, I just got done doing mm. one that's twenty chapters, so that's not unusual. You know what I mean? So, like, what if each of us did like three chapters? Yeah, oh yeah, that'd be a book, right? Yeah, three short stories. So, yeah. Ooh, short stories of of the brilliant outcasts. I yes, there's really no short <laughs> stories in here. <laughs> yeah, right. How long do you have? You got to minimize. I was really proud of us. I really, if for some reason, I thought we had less time, so I was like, okay, y'all, let's get, everybody get it in. We want to hear what everybody thinks and feels in your life and stuff. But we got to say it really fast <laughs> so we can hear everybody, so we don't run out of time. But I want to give you all a little quote because I know we have, what do we have, two minutes? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we just want, you know, we want to send love and hugs to everybody in London. And, and, you know, we, I hope that this can be stopped. Why is it happening there? So many, I mean, we've never in the history of what was going on that we're dealing with now in our world have we seen Mm -hmm. one place like this, like, you know, London or in England hit three times and within two months. And I think mm. isn't Ariana Grande doing a concert t- tomorrow to raise mm. money for the family from the prior incident uh, a week ago, or it's been a little over a week now. But, you know, I think that they're just somehow we have to raise up as a, as a global, as a world and say, we're just, don't, you know, we're not going to put up with this. And, mm. you know, we're stronger than this. And yeah, we're not on the same soil as she is because that's where DM is, but we are standing up for those people and we want to protect our own uh, soil where we are as well. And just say, you know, this is not okay. You know, we have this planet that was given to us. It is a privilege to live here Mm. and we need to honor it. And if we were supposed to be one kind of people living on this planet, that is how it would be. So get over it. If you don't like someone else, Get over it if you don't like their flavor, their color, their food, their song, their music. Get over it. You know, we all have got to find a way to live in peace on this planet. You know, and find a way to laugh about the differences that we have. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're just not meant to all be the same. Okay, otherwise we'd have salt for spice. You know, look at all, how many spices we have. Otherwise our food would be so flipping boring, right? So um, Mm -hmm. I wanted to give you all a little quote that I wrote a while back. It came to me and it's the stirrings in our heart are the pathways and the roadway to our life. So the the stirrings that you have in your heart, aren't they your pathway? Aren't they your road? Aren't they that little, you need to do, you know, I want to do this or you should do this. And it kind of that nudging that you have to kind of get you to listen to what your spirit wants. What does your soul want to do? How does it want to express itself? You know? So dream, 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 keep dreaming and Mm. keep believing in yourself and keep believing the world is still a good place and not get caught up in what's happening because we have to have Mm. dreamers in the world, don't we? Yeah, we do. do. You got to teach other guys how to dream, the kids and all of that. Absolutely. And if they Mm. see imaginary friends, they have imaginary friends, let them have their imaginary friends, (laughs) you know, because sometimes they're than the kids they go to school with. Mm. <laughs> and they're all hanging out right over here. <laughs> all <of> Prince. <laughs> going for coffee after this. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's got business in the front, party in the back. 
<laughs> I swear my husband thinks I must have imaginary friends because I'm laughing at my phone all the time like, ah, oh, yeah. Emily's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Mary. <laughs> oh, Kathy. Yeah. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> Sarah, I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> he believe we actually exist. Yeah. Yeah. No, he knows. But I, I just spend so much time talking about you guys or like laughing at random little things. I know. How can, you know what? Our group has become like crack because we're. <laughs> our, our group our sometimes like smells teachers. like crack, like, like butt crack. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is in your coffee, Emily? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, just cream. I mean, it may be wine. That's what it says, right? Then, it may be wine. Hey, but... We could say our, our group is like sugar. <laughs> sugar we like sugar because sugar is like cocaine on the brain <laughs> mm, exactly. we're, sugar. we're well, like sugar. cocaine on the brain sugar. yeah right it really is it, it we're is. just less destructive <laughs> <laughs> well, right, i don't know Emily's Me too. Her husband in his sleep that's right emily's trying to kill her husband yeah in his sleep, so no <laughs> i'm just trying to have some entertainment don't get it twisted <laughs> I would totally do CPR if it went too far. <laughs> uh, I just like to push it right to the limit. Yeah. What's that? Is B gone? I think, yeah, she, I think she left before. Oh, she did? Because she was like, oh, time's up. So I'm not going to be the one that gets in trouble for having the show <laughs> straight too long. Okay. Well, We're... listen, we want to say goodbye, everybody. And we hope you have a fantastic Sunday or going into Monday, depending on where you are in the world. And yeah, there you go, Sarah. Big time. <laughs> I swear that was just on time. Yes. So we'll see you guys next Sunday. <laughs>